Oh, it's been a hot day today. But anyway, I thought we could have a look at um, the basic functions of bipolar transistor. So anyway, have a little bit of a look at um, a bipolar transistor and see what it's useful for, its main purpose of existing. And then I just want to stress that, yeah, as we looked in the previous video of different transistor sizes and stuff, it doesn't really matter if you have the fundamental function is the same whether you have a small one or or one of these power power um, transistors. So, so I chose one of these small ones. I'll put the type in the comment. Anyway, so I've rigged up a little test circuit here, and um, basically it has the emitter on this side, and that's just put to ground, and then you have the base with a one kilo ohm resistor and then a, a milliamp meter for that and then we have the collector with a milliamp meter and then I'm um, a hundred ohm load now initially and then I have a voltmeter to um, measure the voltage over the um, collector to the emitter uh, voltage and um, then I have a power supply where I'm feeding um, 10 volts over the uh, over the transistor or over the load. So from here to there it's 10 volts and then I'm putting in approximately 6 volts into the base. So um, and here we can already see what the basic function of a uh, transistor is. It's basically it's a continuous current source. So here we see that we're putting in I can actually turn it off, you see what happens, it goes to zero. So here we're putting in one milliamp on the base, and that disappears out the collector, and then um, we then um, have the main load here, which is like 90 milliamps. So it's basically, it's a, um, a current amplifier in, the, in, the, in this usage, so you put in one milliamp, and you get out 90, so the amplification factor is 90. And what makes a transistor a bit different from resistors is that it's dynamic. So um, if I um, choose to add uh, additional load, so let's say like 10 ohms extra, then I move the, move the source to, um, to that end, and it will... Um, the base current stays the same, and it will um, try and maintain approximately the same um, current. So that's around yeah, 85 milliamps. So we don't really want to trust this. And um, this, of course, where uh, the uh, a real transistor deviates from the theoretical transistor. That a theoretical transistor would give you exactly the same um, current. So it's it's um. In this case, due to various factors, your performance curve of the transistor, for example, and other inaccuracies, it will not um, do that. But you see here, this is the voltage. The main interest is that the voltage changed over the transistor. So it's compensating, trying to get, keep the current the same based on the one milliamp that's been fed in. So the other example is voltage following. And um, as you see now, I put in 6 volts just to make it easier to understand. And then um, you have a little bit over 1 milli, milli amp here. And um, then you have 1.3 volts as the basically reverse output because what it does, it's an inverter, so it rever reverses the um, voltage. So this is the lowest point that it will hit, it's 1.3 volts. So under this configuration, if I use 6 volts on the base. And then if we reduce the voltage on the base, then the voltage will go up and reduce because it's a reverse action. And when I bring it down to zero, then we get the full 10 volts. So I can, yeah, the volta voltage on the output side will vary between um, its low point, put it back to six. which is 1.3 volts up to 10 volts. So then we'll go like in a curve. So 
so that's a called a voltage follower. So you can build a uh, amplifying follower when it comes to the voltage handling. So that's the other use case. And then of course, um, you know, you can turn this into a switch because if you um, take the base away, and it goes to ten. And when you put the base on. Uh, the voltage goes down. And if I would give it more base voltage, then you get it even closer to zero. So you can also use it as a as a switch. Yeah. And then there are two extreme cases. There's one where there is no basically the there is no um, collector load. It's basically a you know, yeah, infinite resistance, then the, the logic in the transistor won't work anymore because it can't regulate that. And the other other extreme is that um, uh, the collector is short circuited. Um, basically, you put the supply voltage directly on the collector, that will also prevent the um, transistor from working correctly. Uh, not in the case of an ideal transistor, but in the case of the real transistors, then they, it actually won't work. So there's a, there's a bit of a difference between the ideal description of a transistor and the, the re real real world. So anyway, to summarize um, transistor functions, you, you can use it as, as a follower, like I demonstrated just now or as a current source, and that's its primary function, or uh, as a dedicated amplifier, like you saw the voltage follower, or then just as a pure f switch, and this is actually basically a, a configuration where, which is you know, the most usual when you're just going to use it as a switch. So, I hope you found this informative. Um, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you thought the video was worth it. Uh, merch is available, or if you'd just like to buy me a cup of coffee, that's also possible. The uh, links are in the comments. Uh, all the contributions will go towards developing the channel, building more projects, and um, I'll see you in the next one.